All right, guys. So I'm going to show you how to get RGB into your North American consumer grade CRT. I still see guys out there talking about how you have to use S video because North American CRTs don't take RGB. And it drives me nuts. Like I thought people knew about this by now. You just need a transcoder. It's a plug and play solution. No input lag, no video quality loss. I mean, right now I got Gunner's Heaven on the PlayStation 1. I'm putting RGB to both my consumer grade CRTs right here. XBR uh, 36 200 something like that this is a 27 FV 15 I think both consumer grade sets I mean it's just gorgeous you don't got to RGB mod your TV I mean we got a plug-and-play solution let me show you how it looks let me pull up get this game going here get in here real close like Check this out. I mean, it's gorgeous. I see. I saw a video the other day. This guy, his TV. I mean, it took component and he's RGB modding it, and it was a pain to to do all that work. And I'm thinking, man, you don't got to do all that. So if you want to get RGB out of your TV, you know, just stay tuned. I'll, I'll show you. You know what you need and then kind of talk about the differences between RGB and component what the transcoder does the benefits and weaknesses of RGB and component so you need to make sure your TV takes component if it doesn't take component you can't use a transcoder and when I say component I mean the red green and blue right here it says component right there not composite this is composite the yellow Component is three separations of video. And as long as it does that, it's going to take RGB. I mean, most CRTs manufactured between 1999 and 2005 or 2007 or basically anything after 1999 is going to take component. So this is the crux of the biscuit right here. Transcoders. This is the most basic one right here. Retro Tink Transcoder, RGB to Comp, that's what it's called. You can Google it, find it. Take SCART on the in it inputs, your SCART RGB, and it outputs component video, and it splits out the audio right here, left and right. And that's it, it's super basic. This one, you can plug the power into like a power brick, or you can plug it like USB right into your computer. And it just works, guys. Like. You put RGB in, you get component out. Now there are different ones. Here's the shiny bow, which was the first one I got before RetroTINK made that other one. And it works fine too. I didn't notice any video noise. Like what you can look for, and if you get one and it's it's got artifact, is you'll see like lines on the screen or you'll see some kind of visual disturbances. These don't have any of that. I mean, it could always be your cables, but component video really doesn't have issues with cable length and cable quality like RGB does. We'll talk about that a little later. Now, this is another one here, and this one takes RGB HV or RGBS through a VGA and outputs component on the out. Um, this I use to hook up to my computer. I love this thing. Before I had this, I had the shiny bow. And then I had another device that would take um, my VGA from my computer. And then I had this thing that would combine the sync and then spit out SCART. Like it was basically a VGA to SCART converter. And then that went into here and then this converted it to component. It was just more complicated. Um, but there, are, if you don't find one of these, like these things come and go. Like you can see on here, it says where you can get it. Uh, what is it? Walkabad, walkabavideo.com. I'll see, I'll see these are available and then sometimes they're not. And these products tend to come and go. Like by the time I'm making this video, you might not even find this. There might be something else available. So, I mean, basically you just got to Google search transcoder RGB to component video transcoder. Now you might want to put in VGA into that if VGA is what you need. Um, they might make one that spits out, um, or excuse me, will take instead of SCART, you could probably find one that takes like B and C, but that's not what you need because all of our, our consoles output SCART mostly, you know. 
the cheap cables are usually SCART, your Genesis, your Super Nintendo, your modded Nintendo, your TurboGrafx-16, you're gonna find just a SCART thing, and that's all you do. Like, it's as if, you know, you usually if you have like a Super Nintendo, you'd have an RGB out, and you'd have a SCART, SCART out from it, and it would plug into another cable that would combine and then go to your, your broadcast monitor if it was RGB, and it would break out into BNC or SCART. Well, you can just take that cable that comes right out of your console and plug it right into here. And that's it, man. No input lag, no video quality loss. It's uh, RGB quality. So I got my RGB mounted nest pulled out for demonstration purposes. This is how it's going to work. You got your, your audio video out of whatever console you have. It doesn't matter what console it is. SCART output into your transcoder. You got your power from your transcoder going into the wall, or if it's a USB transcoder, you could have it going into your computer if you want. Of course, you could use a power brick on those models and go into the wall as well. And then you got your component out, plugs into your TV. And it's the same for all consoles, pretty much. You know, your Super Nintendo, your Genesis, your TurboGrafx-16, your PlayStation 1, they all basically have the same setup. Very easy, plug and play. So I'm gonna demonstrate the chief difference between RGB and component. I already demonstrated the quality. You could see the scan lines earlier in the video. You could see how good it looked. It's virtually the same in terms of sharpness. Um, I'll get into that here in a minute, but I wanna talk about this. The chief difference is when you have RGB plugged in, if I adjust the chroma like I'm gonna do right now, it wouldn't do anything. The RGB is set or excuse me, the chroma is set when you do when you have RGB plugged in, but it isn't with components. So some people will say, oh, the colors look weird with their component video. Well, that's because you haven't adjusted them. So all you got to do is adjust your chroma. Um, technically, you would have to adjust your tint or your hue. I've never had to adjust tint or hue on anything. You just set it to zero in the middle. I can show you how to do that, too. I have a video on that, but you do have to adjust your chroma. Um, you can do it by eye. You pull up a SMPTE color bars. Like you want these two bars to be the exact same intensity. Like if I drop this down, obviously this one's intense and this one's off. It's black. That's with my chroma all the way down. If I turn my chroma all the way up, now you can see that this is dim and this is brighter. Let me turn my ISO up a little bit on my phone for the recording. So see how bright that is? My chroma's up too high. So you do it till it's, they look the same. It's, it's easier in person than looking through the camera here. So that's in the middle. That's where it's supposed to be. If you want to get fancy, you can turn the red and green guns off like this and pull up a blue screen and you can adjust chroma that way. It's actually easier. There's like a glare right here. So let's look at these bars over here instead. These ones work too. Where's my chroma? So that's, that one's too bright. No, that one's too bright. So right there, that's it. And if you don't have, you know, excuse me one second. If you don't have, whatchamacallit, red and green guns, like a button on your, your broadcast monitor like I have here, you can go into the service menu on a lot of TVs and turn them off to do this. Or you can go by theater gels, that's what this is. And this will make a blue screen. These are just these little, they're called theater gels. These little thin film things you put over there. Or you can just do it by eye, really guys. Like, you know, whatever works. And like I said, tint hue, um, what you would do to adjust that. Oops, wrong one. Is you want this one to be the same intensity right here. This guy right here. It looks like the white balance is off on my phone, which is making it look like these two are different. But really, it's the white balance on my phone. See how I can... I'm adjusting the white balance on my phone now. <laughs> See, that makes it, looks like I'm, makes it look like I'm correcting it. But well, this is a good way to set white balance on my phone. Never thought of that. So there it is. Now the white balance on my phone is set to match my broadcast monitor. Okay, so let's talk about something else. So up top there, you can see the brains of my whole operation, my component switcher. 
Um, this is a benefit of using component is you can buy these component switchers, Extron matrix switchers. This cost me 40 bucks, guys. The RGB ones are running around 200 last I checked. My uh, sweetheart of a wife got me this for Christmas. Um, I love it. And uh, a benefit of these switchers, the component ones, is you don't have to mess with the sink. There's an issue with the Extron switchers and RGB and sink. And then there's just cable link, guys. Like All that cable length, if you're running RGB all over the place, becomes an issue. Like I have a 15 foot cable, might even be 20 feet, I forget, but uh, it's really long and it's a component cable so I get no noise through it at all. And it was cheap, RGB cables are expensive. Um, so that's the benefit of component. I just run all of my shit through component now. It's just easier. I mean, this will take RGB, but I just have component hooked up into that and component hooked up into these bad boys. All right, one last word before we go, guys. Cables. So one benefit of component video is the cables are cheap and they work great. I don't know what it is, but RGB cables get artifacts in them. If you get cheap ones that are like, I mean, cheap RGB cables are like 20 bucks and they don't work good. I've seen like lines on the screen, like jagged lines and seen artifacts trying to cheap out on RGB. With component, you don't have to worry about that. Like I said, I got like a 15 foot, 20 foot component cable, no problems. And I try to buy, like I go, you can find these at the thrift store, just any, you know, I try to find thick ones. Like these are thick and long. These are what I try to get. Okay, no jokes, guys. But yeah, I try to get the thick and long cables. They're like a dollar. But sometimes, you know, I do find these for like a dollar, 50 cents, and these are thinner. And sometimes they'll make the uh, the audio on them even thinner than the video. Um, but I still buy them. And they, I haven't even had a problem with the cheap, like super thin ones. I've, you know, I've tested it and thought I'd have a problem, but just have not. The only problem I ever had was when I actually bought expensive cables recommended off Retro RGB. Um, I bought some cables off their component cables for like forty bucks, and those are the only ones that ever failed on me. The blue, the blue on it, like went out. Um, the only time in my life RCA cables have failed, and that's something to know is you can use the composite video cables for component. You just have to match the colors. So if you're running, say, the white as the green on your um, transcoder side, just make sure the white is green, goes to the green part on the TV. So, I mean, you would probably use red on the transcoder for red. And then I like to use yellow as green on the transcoder and white as blue. So then when I go to my TV, I just, red is red on the TV. Um, uh, green, the green part I use the oh, fuck that didn't make any sense. <laughs> I got all mixed up, but yeah, you can use these. The colors don't mean anything. It's just wire wrapped in in this insulation, and then they just color the ends. There's nothing magical about the colors. You just got to make sure they match. Got a couple more things to point out about RGB and component. You know. RGB in North America is kind of sexy and component is not. It's funny because when I talk to guys, well I say talk to guys, I've only talked to a couple from from uh, Britain and over there I heard that component is sexy. Like, oh, component's the better one and RGB isn't as good. Probably because they don't have component over there, they have RGB. So there's a bit of like mystique around RGB here and hype around it. Now, I don't want to be like I'm team component. Like I don't want to make this a team thing, like I'm anti RGB. I'm really making this just cuz I I feel like this information isn't out there and I wish people knew about this to make a better decision about how to hook up their their hardware. Like in some circumstances RGB is better. Say you have a broadcast monitor and you have one console or you only have one monitor RGB is simpler if you have you know in my particular setup with all the stuff I have going on and long cables component is better so yeah I wanted to point that out one thing like about RGB and component like when you plug into a broadcast monitor you can plug in component and RGB into the same slot like you plug your component cables right into the same same holes that you would plug in your RGB cables 
and you just have to flip a switch on your RGB monitor to tell it to take, you know, to use component or RGB. And this got explained to me once when I was at a broadcast station, an editing station, and they were saying like, RGB and component are basically the same thing. It's just kind of the way, it's like a proprietary thing, like just the way they designed it is the, the signal's organized a little different, but quality wise, it's the same and it's a pretty easy um, electronic circuit to, to change it from RGB to component. It's not like changing composite to RGB or RGB to composite. There's no way to do that without like compressing signal. But component breaks out color into three, um, three separate cables and so does RGB. Uh, what else to say here? Yeah, like, so people will RGB mod their TVs, right? Like, that's the thing. Like, RGB is so popular. I feel people are making some bad decisions because it's like people think they need RGB. And the RGB modding of TVs is one of them. Like, if you RGB mod, uh, a, like, a average CRT, it's not going to look good. Like, you'll get a screen door pattern. Now, there are TVs that could benefit from an RGB mod, like a Trinitron, like a say like a 1998 Trinitron XBR or something like that would probably look really good with an RGB mod. And you would do that if your TV doesn't have component. But if your TV already has component, these transcoders are like $80. It just makes a lot more sense to just get the transcoder. And you can introduce issues and problems when you do the RGB mod to your TV. And honestly, how many of us have the ability to do that anyways? Um, I mean, it's... On some TVs, it's not a hard mod, but just any kind of modification is out of probably your average retro gamer's abilities. So yeah. Oh, another thing I've noticed people will mess up on with the RGB thing is they think they need RGB. So they'll go and buy a $400 eight inch monitor because they think they need that RGB. Well, yeah, the eight inch monitor, the professional monitor will take RGB but you're gaming on an eight inch screen. And then I feel like that turns people off to gaming. Like they think they have to have RGB. So they go buy this eight inch monitor. You're way better off with this 36 inch monitor, believe me guys, um, and just buying an $80 transcoder. Yeah, like I don't, I don't wanna poo on you guys. If you got RGB, like that, there's nothing wrong with it. But if you're looking into getting into RGB, this is something you should consider. So that's going to wrap up the video, guys. Go out there and beat some hard games for me.